Officer Postal Whistle of the Canadian Mounted. Hello, Officer. Good evening, Mr. Snavely. Is it still snowing? I don't know. To tell you the truth, I never looked. Did you get your man? Well, not yet, but I got my eye on him. Well, that's something. You pulling out? I'm figuring on going over the rim tonight. How's your son, Chester? You hear it from him lately? I ain't a hear it from Chester. It'll be a year come Michaelmas. I was thinking of the song that you read about him. I wanted to sing it to my wife last night. You know, we got a boy just about Chester's age who's got a hankering to go to the city. Have you got your dulcimer here? Yes, I have, officer. I wonder if you'd mind singing me that song. I'd be tickled to death, sir. You'll have to excuse me, though, if my voice isn't just right. You know, we can't get any epicac up on this part of the country. Go right ahead, Mr. Snavely. You won't consider me rude if I play with my mitts on, will you? Not at all, Mr. Snavely. Not at all. was once a poor boy, and he left his country home. And he came to the city to look for work. He promised his mom and pa he would lead a sinless life and always shun the fatal curse of drink. Once in the city, he got a situation in a quarry, and there he made the acquaintance of some college students. He little thought they were demons, for they wore the best of clothes. But the clothes do not always make the gentleman. They tempted him to drink, and they said he was a coward. Until at last he took the fatal glass of beer. When he found what he'd done, he dashed the glass upon the floor. And he staggered through the door with delirium agreements. Once upon the sidewalk, he met a Salvation Army girl, and wickedly he broke her tambourine. All she said was, heaven, heaven bless you, and placed a mark upon his brow with a kick she'd learned before she had been saved. As a moral to young men who come down to the city, don't go around breaking people's tambourines. That certainly is a sad song. <laughs> don't cry, Constable. It is a sad song. My uncle Ichabod said, speaking of the city, it ain't no place for women, gal, but pretty men go there. <laughs> you always said something to make you split your sides of laughing. <laughs> Comical old gentleman he was. Well, I think I'll be a high tailing over the rim. And it ain't a thick night out for man or people.
Any gold down the ghost pole? Found that nougat right be on the table. A nougat? A golden nougat? Just what you've been a combing them our hills for, for nigh on to 30 years. It must be worth almost a hundred dollars. It'll help to pay off the mortgage on the old shack. Has that pill for Medicine Hat been here again? Yes, and he wants more money. Rat is high. He wants more money, and if he don't get it, he'll take our Malamute. You won't take old Balto, my lead dog. Why not, Paul? Because I had him. You had him? He was mighty good with mustard. We was a mushing over Blind Nag Rim last night, and I got mighty hungry. You better take your mucklocks off, Paul. Captain Pippiton of the Canadian Mounted smuggled a police dog across the border for you. He smuggled a police dog across the border for me? Yes, and he says for you to keep it under your hat. How big is it? About so high. He's crazy. Pa, it's just three years today since they put our dear son in jail for stealing them thy bonds, and I know he never stole them. Sure he never stole them. Our Chester never stole nothing from nobody. Hardly ever. Do you think he'll come a-headin' for home when they turn him loose from that plague of jail? I reckon guess and calculate he will, Ma. Chester! again, ain't we? Welcome home, Chester. Thank you, Paul. But I don't suppose we'll have him with us long. Once the city gets into a Bahoy system, he loses his hankering for the country. Sit down, Chester. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Will you have some soup, Chester? That's my soup, Ma. <coughs> Hand me that bread I was dunking, will you? Thanks. Dad, I ain't ever gonna leave the old farm again. I've come back here to stay with you and Ma. And I ain't ever gonna leave again. 
see you both again, and I'm so glad to be back home with you and Mom, but I can't talk. I'd like to go to my little bedroom and lay on the bed and cry like I was a baby again. <laughs> Lie down and take a little rest first, Chester. Well, good night, Paul. Good night, Chester. Good night, Ma. Good night, Chester. Sleep well, Chester. Thank you, Paul. You too. Thank you, Chester. Sleep well, Chester. Thank you, Ma. You sleep well. Don't Thank forget you. to open the window a bit, Chester. Don't forget to open yours a bit, Paul. I won't. Yes, Chester. don't forget to open your window a bit, Chester. Put yours up a bit too, Ma. Good night, Chester. Good, Good night, Paul. Good night. Good night, Paul. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Chester. I think I'll go out and milk the elk. Thank you, Mom. And it ain't a pit night out for man or beast. Did you steal them bonds? Yes, Ma. I stole them bonds. I was a bank messenger, and they caught me fair and square. I wasn't framed. I know you stole them, but I never would admit it to your father. If he thought you stole them, it would break his poor old heart. Never tell him any different. Good night, Chester. Good night, Paul. And it ain't a fit night out for man or beast.
Has Chester gone to bed yet, Ma? I don't think so, Paul. I speak to you a minute, son? Yes, Paul. Chester, did you steal them bonds? I know you stole them, son, but I never would admit it to your mother. She thinks you're innocent. You must never tell her any different. She thought you stole them. It would break her poor old heart. Oh, it's so good to be home, Dad. I'm going to stay here now with you and Ma for all time. Chester, have you any of them bonds on you? Or any of that money? No, Dad. I ain't got any of them bonds on me. And I took that tainted money and threw it away. And you came back to me and mother. Yes, Paul. Hmm. The sponge on us, the rest of it. I love you. You lug squatter. Clamp you. Squatter. I need to pick my out, a man of peace. 